uh, ward representative. Uh, then, if you wanted to have it brought up here at City Council, uh, along with the letter that you write to them, uh, write one up here at City Council. Uh, you know, telling us out and about whenever we're at Walmart, we don't always take down the Rebestas notes and everything else, so write it down and turn it into us. Uh, so that's a way that you can help out the community <coughs> and working from there. So, with that, we're going to uh, turn it over to public comment. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Welcome, Kel. Thank you, Mom. And once again, good evening to the council and the mayor. Good evening. Good evening. All the issues you just discussed concerning the welfare of the citizens in this town, I commend you for that. I also want to commend our police department once again for the job they're doing in our neighborhoods. When you mention Zone 1, that's my zone. The majority of a lot of the stuff that's been happening in Zone 1 has been happening on my corner. Now, this is the third year in a row that I've come down here and addressed this to the council at the time by Hancock was made. He did a phenomenal job of straightening it out for a while until he was no longer the mayor. During that time, we also had KFBS came down here to discuss this issue about the fireworks in Kenny. It seems that everybody around us, every community around us, is starting to cut back and either eliminate fireworks. I realize this is an issue for the city as far as revenue is concerned, because I know somebody on this council is involved with these fireworks <coughs> as far as a business. There's nobody in there. Nobody now. Used to okay. Nobody now. <laughs> but the problem is this. As the mayor said, when you start selling fireworks ahead of the scheduled time they're supposed to be fired, you're going to have a lot of people who are not going to agree with that. If I got them in my hand, the temptation is there for me to shoot them. I don't have any problems with fireworks. You all know I'm a 22-year mili 22 military retiree. So I'm proud of the the job that I've done for my nation, and I'm also proud of the way this nation has been run up to this point. Now, with this COVID virus out right now, we got a lot of unrest going on in Kenneth. We don't have enough officers to address the issue that's been going on. Now, prior to the 4th to the 1st of July, I had a personal conversation with the chief. I also talked to Brenda Ellis. I also talked to Bob Hancock who's now my ward representative, and he came by and personally talked to me before all of this evil went down. But since that time, on the first, on, on the 30th of June, my brother-in-law's front window glass got busted out. On the 3rd, on my wife's birthday, with a big parade coming by for her since we had COVID going on, everybody drove by and dropped her presents off, had a nice caravan come by. Prior to that birthday party on the 3rd, I went off and came back and another one of my windows was busted out. So all in all, I've had three windows busted out of my house during the time that nobody has seen anything. A lot of this is happening at 2.30 in the morning. Now, I came up and I asked the question of how long or how late can they fire these fireworks? 2, 2 p.m. in the afternoon to 10 p.m. at night. 4th of July, 2 to 11, or 2 to 12. I also asked about a block party situation. This is not the first time I've asked about this. And I was told by the city attorney, I was told by the chief, and I want this clarified. They say we're not supposed to have block parties. They're not sanctioned in Kenya. Yet on two occasions in the last three years, I've had a gathering on my corner that didn't turn out to be a block party. It turned out to be a dope dealer's party mm. with all of our high school kids out during the summer with nothing else to do. Now, you heard all the reports from all the different wars about there was some easiness in some wards or some zones, but zone one was heavy. The reason for that is because every Tom, Dick, and Harry's child that they're not supervising is coming down there on my corner to one certain house, and the chief knows which house it is, to do all of their damage and all of their stuff that they're doing. 
because this house authorized them to do whatever and whenever they pleased to do it, all hours of the morning. And I live on that corner. I've been there for 38 years. I never had a problem until these certain people moved into the neighborhood three years ago. Is it a rental? Yes, it is, and it's owned by Matt Gardner. And I haven't had a moment of peace. I can't even leave Kennett without fear of coming back and finding my property damaged. I also own rental property, and one of my rent houses was damaged. Now, I pay my taxes. I've never questioned anything. I'm up here as often as I can to find out what's going on in my city because I told you all, I love Kenny. This is my wife's home. She has been here for 69 years. She's never left Kennedy, even in my military days when I was traveling. So we decided to make this home. I could have easily gone back to Florida, but right now I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bringing this to you all for the simple reason. Mayor Wayne, when you were sitting over here where I was sitting at and you were complaining about the St. Francis Street project, you squeaked that wheel for a while. Now you're mayor, this project has been done. My neighbors are afraid to come up here. The reason why people don't come to the city council meeting is because I got a lot of elderly people, some of them are older than I am, who live on my street who are fearful of what's going on on our corner because they're scared to even come out and sit in their yards at night because of what's going on. So our wheel has been squeaking, squeaking, and squeaking. And pretty soon it's going to get rusty. <clears throat> the way it's not going to move anymore. And all we want to do is have some peace in our neighborhood. Now I don't know what you all are going to do about this firework situation. I heard you say you're going to talk about it, see what you're going to do. But my neighbors, our elderly people on our street, are in favor of outlawing them in Kennedy. We know that's going to be hard to do. But it seems like that's the only way we're going to get any peace. And the reason for I say this is because every other city that has stopped these fireworks, everybody knows they can come to Kent, get their little fireworks. And we're not talking about no snap, crack, or pop that like we used to have back in the day when we were coming up with supervision. You've got some serious ordinance out there now. And it's frightening when all you hear all night long when you're trying to sleep is these loud booms. I've done enough of that in my military days. I don't want to hear no more of that boom at all. And it's sad when you try to live in a community and your police department is short staffed and they're doing the best job that they can. That young man that got arrested, he got arrested because he has no home training. Because he's defying the police right now because I believe his mom was in jail at the same time you all picked him up. So he has no respect for the law. And I was right there on my corner when that big fight broke out. And it was, a, it was a silly situation for it to happen to begin with. Two girls fighting over some sorry dude. And that's not the first time. And then the moms come down and they want to fight. When I called Chief Wilson the first time, it was a big fight. Somebody even had to have to be hospitalized. The ambulance had to come get them. It was a good 10 minutes before they cleared off that corner and, and started talking to my neighbor about quieting the party down. It started up again. This time they came back with knives. And I said this before. Pretty soon they're going to come back with guns. It's not going to be this heavy ordinance we're seeing around here on the 4th of July. It's going to be something a lot more deadly. So the second time they came back was when they arrested, I think they took the young man the first time. The second time they had to go down to the street and talk to these girls because their mom got beat down to where they came back with knives. But this is the hot spot here in Kennet right now, and it's because everybody is allowed to come over to this one particular house on the corner of North and Baldwin Street. I'm always referencing North and Baldwin because that's where I live, where my sister-in-law lives, where my brother-in-law lives, and where my rental property is. If you ride through that area, you will see. My block is taken care of. We take care of our shrubs. We take care of our vegetation. We don't have any problems down there. But as soon as you cross that divide, this is where your problems start. Now Bob Hancock's been down to my house twice. He'll tell you. I take pride in my home. But I'm tired of having to replace my property every time some hooligans come through the neighborhood and tear up my stuff. I'm not made of money. And no stimulus, no stimulus checks on getting ain't doing me a bit of good. 
So I just want to make this clear. I want my squeaky wheel to stop. By any means necessary, because you're getting a lot of elderly people down there, and like I said, they're getting very scared. And a lot of them are starting to load their guns. I don't want to have to reload my gun anymore. I've carried enough of them. I don't want to carry anymore. So I thought I'd just bring to you all's attention. Please do what you can to come up with some form of civilization and control when it comes to these fireworks. I don't know what you're going to have to do. I realize with the COVID virus going on, it's hard to arrest anybody or take anybody else. The young man deserved to be taken because he was very belligerent. <coughs> he needed to go. Does this happen mainly around July 4th or all of you? It happens, it happens around me constantly. But July 4th, around that time is really bad. This was really bad this year. I I've had this problem before. Night. I heard some last night. And uh, as long as they got them left, and I had some on Sunday night too, I, th I thought it was all over with. It was booming in my neighborhood. But like I said, that is the location. This is where everybody comes. This is where everybody do their dirt, and as soon as they see the police coming, the scouts are out watching, and they're running behind all the vacant houses that are around me, throwing their ordinances in the bushes as they're going. And as soon as they leave, and things quiet down, within a half an hour, they gather up all this stuff, and they're right back at it again. And it's hard to say who is doing what, because like you were saying about the cameras. I haven't had cameras on my house, but by God, I'm going to put some up now. Because I, I'm tired of, like I said, I'm tired of my property being destroyed. My wife is not here tonight because she has had a rough week behind all of this. She's not well. And neither are the elderly people on my street well at this time. And a lot of us attend the same church. We are a diverse neighborhood. We all try to get along. We all live together. But we cannot keep tolerating what's going on in our neighborhood. I told you all about the neighborhood watch. There is no neighborhood watch. Not unless you're watching for the police. And it's sad to have to live like this. Now some of you are blessed to be living in these high profile communities where you don't have to be worried about this type of stuff. But the majority of people who live in Canada are not that blessed. And with every, like I said, with everything that's going on in the country right now, we need to be unified as to how our city is going to go. Otherwise, it's going to be torn up. We were blessed not to have too many fires this time around. But with the type of ordinance and the type of fireworks they're selling now, I pray one day somebody's kid don't get hurt or somebody don't take the law into their own hands because they're tired. So try to do something about the squeaky wheel we got. Right That's all I got to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. <coughs> Uh, all right, so we need a closed session tonight. So we need a motion to close and go into closed session. Main Street and Industrial. Yes. Oh, that's the adjourn. We go into closed session. We go into closed session. I second. Hi. Hi. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 All right. Can you, can you start? Are you going to go into closed session?